Hey y'all, I got my Tina book for July and realized I never posted my one for June. And apparently I never took a picture for the thumbnail either. So uh, that's why you're getting this beautiful picture as a thumbnail instead of the usual tea and a book uh, thumbnail. But feel free to follow me on Instagram where I appear a little bit less of a mess than here on YouTube. Bye. Hey y'all. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to try the headphones again, even though it's so weird not to be able to hear what the hell's going on around me. <laughs> I don't know how people do this every day. Anyways, it is time for tea and a book. <laughs> As everybody knows, Sips By is a subscription box where you let them know the kind of flavors that you like for tea and then they send you four different teas for the month. The flavors that I've selected, I don't know if I've ever talked about this or not, but um, I pretty much liked everything. I went in in the winter time and deselected chai because I was getting chai every time and I wanted kind of more variety, but I have likes or thumbs up or high ratings or whatever for almost every flavor kind of profile, except for earthy, which I put kind of in the middle or kind of not as much of that. Even if it, you know, vegetable, sweet, floral, a little bit less. Um, so there's a whole range of things that you can go on and kind of rate. So I got this one at least a week or so ago today that I'm recording this is the 10th I think it's either the 9th or the 10th one of them I really liked I've already tried it and drank three of the four little packets that they sent so that was the Tulsi peppermint and I've gotten the Tulsi peppermint before and sometimes I think I go through these phases of really liking mint tea so the Tulsi peppermint is caffeine free. It's revered in India as the queen of herbs. Tulsi or the holy basil supports stress, mood, the immune system and detoxification. It's refreshing and restorative. I really like it. I, like I said, I've already drank almost, if not all of it, almost all of it. So there's not even a little sachet in here to show you. Oh one left so that's my favorite right now um, i also got an orange passion fruit moringa energy infusion that is this one i haven't tried it yet super caffeinated this moringa energy infusion contains 155 mix 155 megs of organic caffeine tea extract, making it the perfect coffee replacement, providing an energy boost without jitters or crash. So I'll probably try that one tomorrow if I remember. I tend to drink my tea midday to late, so it never I never think about it as a coffee replacement, but maybe I will put it in my tea, in my water um, bottle for the afternoon. Let's see, energy sips. So I think I have gotten a different version of this, like maybe a different flavor of the same tea. This one is lemongrass, lemon verbena, peppermint, honeybush, green mate, guarana seed, cinnamon bark, licorice root, natural flavoring grapefruit vitamin blah 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 <laughs> so i'm interested to know what that tastes like because of the licorice root and the green mate and the peppermint so maybe i'll try this one tomorrow instead this one contains caffeine exotic citrusy and refreshing this energizing blend adds grapefruit mate and guarana seeds to create an uplifting brew Fortified with vitamin B6 to help reduce fatigue. So, hmm. I'm going to, like, 
just open it a little bit to smell it. Ooh, that smells so good. <laughs> okay, so that's a contender for tomorrow as well. Or maybe the next day. You never know. There's so many days in the week. And then the last one, high caffeine, a woman's woman breakfast tea. So women supporting women and enjoying tea together is a cuppa we can get behind. Savor this pleasant rounded black tea with your breakfast and enjoy a balanced lift of caffeine. So this one is by the Steep Society. That looks so cute. It looks like a package I'm probably gonna keep forever even after I drink all the tea. I don't know why I look, like why are my eyes so red? No idea. Probably I could use a little caffeine and a little sleep. <laughs> all right, so that's the tea. The tea that I'm drinking right now in my cup that you saw me making in the don't forget to subscribe intro Hot. is this Hawaiian tea and the flavor is sunrise it's got mamaki hibiscus lemon and rose hip an awakening tea blend to meet your day inspired by the warmth and vitality of the Hawaiian sunrise so a friend of mine that I grew up with we started um, knowing each other in middle school I think maybe seventh grade his name, the name I called him back then was Junior, but his name is Fuyono, and he is from Hilo. And um, he was posting something on his Facebook about some different beverages that he was drinking, and I was like, I want that. And so he actually ordered me a bunch of stuff to be delivered by Amazon, which is very sweet. And um, so he sent me uh, from this same company this tea bottled um, cold. So they make it in a bottle for the refrigerator or not, as you prefer. And I think I actually really like it better hot, which is true of most teas that I drink that have rose in them. I prefer the rose and heavy floral flavors, warm to compared to cold. Um, but I, I do like this tea and I'm almost out of the bottles as well. I put a little bit of sweetener in it, to be honest with you, because it's like no caffeine, no sugar, no blah, blah. Like it's just water and plants. <laughs> and, um, you know, I need my sweeteners. So I liked it. And then there's another one that's a different blend. It's in a blue package. Um, maybe I'll show you that one next time, but I haven't tried that one yet, but I like this one. Okay, the other thing I want to show you before we move to the book is this little suitcase. So this came from the um, at-home store and it was a regular, I thought it was a little cute suitcase. Um, and it had another cuter, smaller suitcase on the inside. And so I have ditched my super makeshift tea box and thrown all my teas into this little suitcase. If I knew how to make things like out of wood, I would put little uh, separators in here, but I really don't know how to do that. And I'm probably just gonna cut my finger off. So I'll just use it the way that it is. So, but it's really cute and it's much cuter sitting on top of my microwave compared to the box I was using, which was the old an old, like shipping box or whatever. So this makes me feel classy, like a classy lady with my floral tiny suitcase and my teas. Alrighty. So the book that I'm going to tell you about is Lost in the Neverwood by Aidan Thomas. So I believe I featured one of his other books his other book, because I'm pretty sure there's only the two, Cemetery Boys. So it's the same author as that. That book, I loved that book so much. This one is a Peter Pan retelling. Not necessarily, I actually, maybe it's a Peter Pan reimagining 
sometimes I get a little bit confused with those. But basically what has happened is that Wendy, we are introduced to our main character, Wendy. She is 17, 18, 18, 17 or 18 years old right now in, in this book. But when she was 13, she goes into the woods with her brothers, John and Michael, and they disappear for six days and she comes out of the woods six days later and they don't. So the her life has kind of been a mess since then. Her parents' life has been a mess since then. And she doesn't remember anything that's happened. She has this kind of hole in her memory. So as a 17 year old, 17 or 18, I don't remember exactly, she starts to notice that she is drawing pictures unconsciously. So she'll look down and she's drawing a picture of a tree with this boy sitting in it. She knows the story of Peter Pan. So this isn't a world where Peter Pan is a, um, you know, an actual story in the world. But her mother used to tell stories about this boy named Peter Pan. And she used to tell her brothers about this boy named Peter Pan. So when she runs over this boy in the street, and he's laying there unconscious and she sees him, she knows who he is. So Peter Pan is in the world. He's looking for her. She has no idea who he is, even though he has this air of familiarity. And there have been a string of missing children cases. And he is basically saying, I need your help to figure out where my shadow is and uh, to figure out what's happening with these kids. It's, it was my job to protect them. So she obviously thinks he's a lunatic. She doesn't want to tell anyone else what's going on because they're going to think she's a lunatic. And um, Peter Pan, who is the boy who never grew up, starts aging in the book. So it's a little bit interesting, kind of like, you know, how um, the vampire teenagers don't age past the 17 or 18 year old stage so that everybody can start making out <laughs> in in Twilight, you know, where it's like, mm, did you do that just so that when Wendy and Peter start making eyeballs at each other, that's not so weird. But Peter and Wendy, the original story, Peter Pan and Wendy, um, is really a story about Wendy. Wendy's the main character of that of that story. So, you know, I think about the definition of protagonist is really who grows and learns something throughout the course of the story. And it's really Wendy's story. And she comes to terms with the fact that she has to grow up and um, kind of enter this world of society that she's not sure she wants to. She really cares about her brother. She really wants to be a kid for longer. Um, and Peter in the original story starts, wants her to come and live with him and take care of him and the other boys because they're just kids. So they call her mother in play, but in actuality, they want somebody to nurture and care for them in Neverland. So in this book, she doesn't, it's kind of like some of that has happened, but she doesn't know any of that stuff. So he kind of alludes to lots of the things from the original story of Peter Pan as he's trying to get her to remember him or things like that. So I really enjoyed it. Peter Pan is one of my favorite, I would say. It's interesting because there's lots about the storytelling or the writing or something about it that I don't actually love. But the story itself, the story of, you know, I love fantasy. I love portal magic. I love living, you know, someplace else, you know, second star to the right and on till morning or whatever. I love that crap. <laughs> I love all of that. So I really enjoy seeing elements of books that I love show up in other books. That's a thing that I love, right? I don't, I wasn't, it's like this, it, I'm not wowed by this and I wasn't wowed by that. You know what I mean? So it doesn't feel like it's Aiden Thomas's work that's making me non-wowed. It's that it's based on um, 
that story that is not wowing to me all the time. I don't know if that even makes sense. I don't think I spoiled anything, but I will post down that this isn't spoiler free just in case any of that felt like a spoiler. But I think probably most of it is actually in the in the thing. Yep, the ch town's children start to disappear. The mystery around her brother. So she still wants to know what happened to the boys because um, they've been missing this whole time. Peter, a boy she thought lived only in her stories, asked for Wendy's help to rescue the missing kids. So I said all of that, I think. So it's not a spoiler. See, I knew I was doing a good job. All right. If you've read it, tell me what you think. If you love Peter Pan or if you don't love Peter Pan. Mm, no, I'll say that a different way. If you love Peter Pan, tell me in the comments. If you don't love Peter Pan or you hate Peter Pan, just, you know, subscribe, but don't, don't say that. No, you can tell me. <laughs> I love a, an interesting conversation about classic children's storytelling. That's so fun. See, don't I look drunk or something? I don't know. Weird. Anyway, catch you on the next one.